Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to display a video in Unreal Engine. This tutorial is going to be separate in two parts. The first one I'm just going to show you how to display a video and to make it disappear when the video reaches the, reaches the end. And the second part is going to be how to make a skippable cutscene, so how to make your video skippable after a certain amount of time. Um, so the thing is that you can't really display a video. Uh, you can, that's what I'm going to show you today, but uh, there's no implemented method to do so. Uh, if you want to make a cutscene, you can use the uh, matinee, but if you want to make an external video and plug it in in your game, uh, there's no real way to do so. So you need two things. The first one is the actual video. I recommend using the WMV uh, type because it's the one that goes uh, the best. Um, you can have audio over it, it doesn't really matter, but I suggest, I strongly suggest to uh, separate your video from your audio. You're gonna see later why. So the, uh, the audio part is going to be a WAV file. So basically what you need to do is to uh, make a folder uh, that you're going to put your cutscenes in. So go back to Unreal Engine and make a folder called cutscenes. Just like that. Okay, inside your cutscene folder, you're gonna to want to make a second folder. Well, actually, you're gonna have as many folders as you have cutscenes. That's just the way I, I'm doing it. You're not obligated to do so, but for my part, I'm gonna make a cutscene uh, number one folder, and I'm going to put my two my two pieces inside that folder. So just drag and drop those two pieces inside, just like that, and it's going to display a media file and a audio file. So if I go into the media file, you can see that it's just the video playing, but there's no audio with it. You can split them inside Unreal Engine, but it causes a bit of problems, so I don't recommend it. So what we actually need to do is to do a structure. So uh, create a structure, you can go into Blueprints and do a structure, and um, just type cutscene struct. So we're gonna need three variables. The first one is, um, actually, just let me do like three, okay. Uh, the first one is going to be the video. So strangely enough, it's going to be a material. You'll see that, uh, you'll see why later. The second one is going to be the audio, which is our sound wave. And last of all is going to be our uh, media player. Just media player. And save it. So, uh, now we have to make the actual video player. So it's going to be a UD or a widget blueprint. So create a widget blueprint under user interface and uh, name it whatever you want. For my case, it's going to be a video player. Uh, open that up. And what you actually want to do is display an image. It's going to be an animated image, but it's going to be an image anyways. So just um, put that full scale. I actually uh, recommend to uh, scaling them a bit bigger than they actually need to be because you don't want uh, like black stripes into your video because you went a little too short um, But if you take your time you can make it fit uh, perfectly. Oh and your anchors you want to make them full screen as well Okay, uh, so that's the uh, the video that we're going to show is going to be on that image um, So for the the, the image uh, you're gonna to need to create a media texture so go back to your wildlife uh, media player and create a media texture. As you can see, it's going to display the video in a little square. And you want to create a material from that texture. Uh, I recommend to naming them in a different way to uh, be able to spot them easier, but for the purpose of the tutorial, it doesn't really matter. So if I try to display the on the image right now, the uh, my wildlife texture, it's going to make an error. And uh, I'm going to show you why it's going to make an error and how you can fix them. Because you could just click on change the, the, the domain right here, but I don't really recommend to do so because you're going to have to do it for every other video that's going to display. So just go into your texture. As you can see, there is the return value here, which is the classic one. What you want, actually want to do is do a user interface right here. And you want to change it. As you can see, it's a lot simpler. And all you have to do is to plug it into the final color. So if I do so, and go back to my uh, video player. My image is right here. So it's gonna be displayed um, like uh, we want it to be. Um, right now, it doesn't really matter anyway because we're going to change the, the way that the uh, the video is chosen, but for now, we're just gonna leave it like that. So what you need is a cutscene. So just create a uh, variable and go take your cutscene structure. Compile. And if we look right here, we can see there is video, audio, and media player like we did uh, earlier. 
So now what we want to do is do a custom event. And this is going to be our um, play video. And it's going to be called by the thing that creates the, 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 the cutscene. Uh, the input is going to be a cutscene structure. Just like that. And what you want to do is to set your cutscene that you have created earlier uh, and to drag and drop your uh, play video, your cutscene into your set. Just like that. Uh, then you want to split your structure pin. So you have your video, your audio player, and your, uh, your audio, sorry, and your media player. So first of all, what we want to do is to rewind the media player, because if we go to our wildlife, it's always going to be playing. So if we get it in like the middle of the, the, the way, it's not going to be displayed well. So what we want to do first is to rewind like that. Then we want to delay the start because uh, for some reason there is a bit of a lag. If you rewind and play in like uh, a microsecond, it's going to be uh, it's going to not necessarily start. It's a bit random. I don't really know why it does that. But if you put the delay of 0.1 second, it fixes everything. So just do it. So then play your media player. So that's going to be uh, restarting your, your video and playing from the beginning. So then what you want, you want to do is to create a 2D sound. So just type in create uh, 2D sound or create a sound. Okay, like that. And you want to drag your audio in. Uh, what that is going to do is actually to create a sound that you're going to be able to pause and play. Uh, because your audio, which is a WAV file, you can't really stop it. You can stop it, you can play it, you just can't do really anything. But the, uh, the, the sound to the, the, the actual audio component, you can't, you, you can, sorry, stop it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so if we want to skip the cutscene, sorry. So then just play it and start time, uh, of course, at zero. Then you want to create a binding for the media player so that when it reaches the end, you're going to be able to dismiss it. So just type in end and you're going to see a sign at end reached uh, and we're going to use it later. So to make sure that the video is displayed correctly, you'll have to bind the brush here. So just uh, go to your, your brush and click bind and create binding. So basically your image is going to be selected right here. So split the structure pin and you have the return value, value image right here. So you wanna get your cutscene right like here, get it and split the structure pin and take the cutscene video part and plug it in. So that way, whatever video that you have imported here is going to be displayed as the brush for the image right here. So now we actually have to create the widget. So go into your character and uh, make a event uh, when you press a button or when you enter a zone, whatever, to create your uh, widget. So what you want to do is to create your widget, uh, take it, make a video player, add to viewport, and finally uh, take your um, custom event, like for our, for our case, it's play video, uh, and drag that up. And then you have the three uh, parts, the video, the audio, and the media player. So you have to select your video for every part. So that's all what we did earlier. So what that's going to do is actually when you press L, it's going to start the uh, the video. And there you go. So uh, the video is displaying and the audio is synced with it. Uh, now the only real thing that we have to do left is to actually dismiss the video player when it, the, the video is done. So go back to your, um, your video player and do a which are on and reach, uh, stop the, the audio. And, uh, oh, I forget to pause the game. So you can just set game pause right here. Okay. So just drag your cutscene and split it. And with the cutscene media player, it can uh, pause the, the media player because um, if it's running in the background, it's actually going to be um, quite stressful on uh, your computer. So you want to pause the media player so that uh, you have the max frame per second on your game. Uh, because when you don't need, need it, you don't want to for it to play for no reason. And uh, finally, set game pause, actually depause the game and uh, remove from parents. So just dismiss the, uh, the widget. So now if I um, watch the video, click on L, our video is starting, the audio is synced, everything is good. 
and it was going to end it's going to uh, destroy the video and we're back on track so that's it for the first part of the day of the video if you want to know how to make a uh, skippable cutscene sorry uh, just stay tuned for um, the second part So, the video is done and everything is good. So, now if you want to make a skippable cutscene, it's really not that hard. So, I'll take you through the steps to do so. So, first of all, go to your event tick and create a get player character node. Out of that get, uh, get player character, you want to uh, cho uh, choose your. Uh, oh no, actually, that's not get player character, it's get. Um, Get controller, sorry. Okay, so just delete that and uh, get uh, control player controller. There we go. Okay, so out of that node, you can uh, type in is input key down and select your key that you want to uh, skip the cutscene with. So in my case, it's going to be uh, enter, or uh, I can make a second one for controller if I really want to. Uh, so is input key down as well. No, that doesn't move input. Is and okay. And uh, I'm just gonna type in gamepad. Uh, face button left. Okay. So just uh, one of the two. So make a or. Bring this in. And I want to make a if with that. So a, a branch, if you will. But actually. Okay. What I want to do is actually do a custom event with the. Uh, the, the the stop node so everything that w when we want the the video to cut we want to call that uh, particular event so instead of instead of using the on end reach uh, we're gonna need, uh, use a custom event and on end reach is just basically going to call that event because uh, the the skippable um, part is going to use that as well so uh, just make an F or a branch and call the end so you can call your other event into it as well so if I play the video, press enter, and it's gone. So press L again, you can do it as much as you want. So yeah, we've made a, a skippable cutscene. Now, um, most cutscenes usually wait a couple of seconds before allowing you to skip, which is a good idea because uh, sometimes you're loading something in the back or something. So uh, what we're actually going to do uh, is to have a timer and you can only skip the cutscene after, for example, four seconds. So I've made a float variable, uh, which is my time, and each uh, with my tick, I'm going to add uh, time um, like that. And we want to uh, make if uh, the the float is bigger than four seconds for my my case, make an end. So if basically. The, the player is pressing a button and it's been more than four seconds is going to be able to skip the cutscene and what we actually wanted to do as well is to write in the bottom right corner that the you can skip um, from a certain point of time so uh, I want to make a text that says press action to skip or something like that so uh, this button not this button actually this text is going to show up when the player is going to be able to skip uh, right now, it's always visible, so just make it hidden and create a binding. And this binding is basically going to do the same thing as in the, uh, the event graph. It's going to check if the the time is past four, and if it is past four, then you're going to make the uh, the text visible, and if not, uh, it's going to be hidden. So just like that, and duplicate the node, and make the second one hidden, just like that. So if we start that. Pop the video. Things good. And four, four seconds in, action to skip, spawn, and we can skip it. If I try to skip beforehand, it does nothing. So only when the action to skip is displayed, I can skip. So you can make your loading time uh, like that, um, so that uh, the video shows up and you can't skip it uh, until the um, your loading is done. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.